I'll be speaking to Ali Al Ahmed. He's a citizen of Saudi Arabia, a former political prisoner, and the executive director of the Gulf Institute, which is based in Washington. He's appeared on numerous TV programs, ranging from France 24 to CNN to Press TV. This interview was prepared for the left forum panel called The Extremist Regime Running Saudi Arabia and How to Expose It. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Thank you for having me, and I'm sorry I couldn't be with you in New York. Let's start with the title of this panel. The corporate media in the U.S. always talks about Saudi Arabia as being modernizers and a moderate force in Middle East fair, affairs. But do you agree that the kingdom is in fact extremist? Yes, uh, the Saudi government is the source of, uh, uh, or the main source of uh, extre extremism today uh, around the world. In fact, if you compare Saudi Arabia to any other country in terms of exporting and creating extremists, Saudi Arabia is it. Uh, this is where we have the, uh, the ideas and the ideology and funding and manpower of uh, terrorist groups, especially uh, ISIS and, and Al-Qaeda. Uh, the Saudi state was founded upon uh, a reign of terror that killed uh, between 300 to 400,000 people, uh, supported by the British Empire at the time, and uh, continued to espouse uh, extremist ideology uh, in its government through school books, publications uh, and even uh, in, in, in the media. Uh, just uh, last month, the governor of the eastern province, the majority Shia uh, province in Saudi Arabia, for example, stated that uh, these people are the uh, followers of the Jew Ibn Saba and uh, publicly called uh, the majority of the province that he rules uh, basically a non-Muslim. Uh, as you uh, uh, probably heard of the bombing of the mosque, of the Shia mosque in, sure. in the Easter province last Friday, uh, that came uh, as a result of Saudi uh, uh, generations of hatred. Uh, why would a Saudi man, uh, aged 19 years old, uh, uh, kill himself inside a mosque, bomb himself and kill people who are uh, uh, conducting prayer uh, there has been any no relationship between him and these people. There was no uh, attack from these people against him, but because... Reading in the media about crimes and punishments in the kingdom, uh, they're frankly hard to believe some of these things are actually done. So let me ask you about some of the crimes first and ask if they really are enforced. What I read, witchcraft disobeying the ruler, a man meeting a man for a date, calling for an atheist thought, women driving, apostasy, and the offense of celebrating Christmas. Are, are all these things actually considered offenses? Yes, in Saudi Arabia they are offenses, they are crimes. In addition to that, uh, uh, you can uh, go to jail for liking uh, a Facebook uh, page of Christians or uh, uh, befriending Shia or writing an article saying uh, uh, I like Christian people this actually happened uh, uh, so uh, things like that are crime in Saudi Arabia the the, the court system is very uh, backward it is a sectarian uh, and it's controlled by the government and it's used as a way to control society and to keep it under the uh, monarchy uh, um, uh, control in Saudi Arabia there is no law really there is what we uh, what I call the king's law it's not Islam or culture it's the king's law that allows the king to uh, send anyone behind bars or to the to the to the gallows uh, if, if he wishes to, to, to do that how about you mentioned gallows how about punishments I read that there's lashing, stoning, beheading, amputation, eye gouging, and the displaying of executed bodies in public. Are, are these punishments still actually used? Yes, the, the displaying, the beheading obviously happens uh, almost now every day uh, in public, in the street. Uh, and people could go and look at how uh, recently a woman was beheaded in the middle of traffic 
uh, while she was screaming, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not guilty, I'm not guilty. It, very much like ISIS style, body are displayed. Just uh, a few weeks ago, uh, three people, three expatriate workers were uh, beheaded and their body uh, w w were put on display last year. Five Yemenis were beheaded and their body was strung up, were strung up in front of the university uh, in, in the south. So that the, these, these acts are really aimed at uh, scaring uh, uh, the people in, in, and pushing them into submitting to, to the ruling family uh, uh, rule. Let's talk about uh, the region as a whole. I wanted to ask you about your latest article, Why Obama should end the Carter Doctrine in the Gulf. First, what is the Carter Doctrine? The Carter Doctrine was developed uh, uh, probably by Zbigniew Brzezinski, uh, uh, who, uh, whose policy to counter the Soviet Union uh, included uh, protecting what, they, what he called the war martyrs of the Gulf from so Soviet hegemony. Uh, although the Soviet didn't have uh, borders with the Gulf, but uh, uh, Brzezinski, who had issues with the Soviet Union, uh, supported the uh, violent attack on the Afghani government, uh, so-called Mujahideen, uh, and especially after the Soviet troops uh, entered uh, Afghanistan. Uh, the, the United States since then has been providing uh, protection for the Gulf monarchies. Uh, under the guise that they are protecting the oil supplies to the world market. The United States has spent, according to Mr. to Professor uh, uh, Stern of Princeton University, uh, uh, over $7.2 trillion, $7 trillion between uh, 1970 to, to 2007. In three decades, the United States spent over $7 trillion. That is about $255 billion a year. Uh, $255 billion a year is greater than the combined budget of the states of California and Florida. So imagine the United States taxpayers are carrying this burden and continue to do so for really, uh, uh, for a thought for, uh, that has no uh, reality on, on the ground. That's why I think it's really important uh, the, the audience here and everybody else would work with us to stop uh, uh, spending U.S. taxpayers' money protecting absolute monarchies of the Gulf. If they want protection, they can pay for it themselves. Now, in addition to this fantastic cost, there's the, there's the question of terrorism. Uh, just recently, the uh, Gulf countries in Saudi Arabia were in Washington supposedly to uh, talk about terrorism, but in your article, you say Saudi Arabia is a chief source of terrorism. Could you explain? Yes, uh, let us not forget September 11. 15 out of the 19 uh, hijackers were Saudis, and uh, two, the other uh, two uh, of the of the uh, other uh, were from the United Arab Emirates. So 17 out of the 19. Uh, hijackers came from the GCC countries. Uh, Saudi Arabia has been supplying ISIS, Al Qaeda, and other terror groups, similar terrorist groups, with manpower, funding, ideology. Uh, since September 11 until now, more than 10,000 Saudi nationals ha have been fighting uh, or have died uh, uh, fighting with terrorist groups in the ranks of these terrorist groups uh, uh, in Syria, Iraq, and Yemen, and other countries. So. Uh, uh, that shows you how Saudi Arabia is involved. Uh, the last attack uh, uh, inside Saudi Arabia itself, uh, last Friday against the Shia mosque, which killed about 24 people, uh, was carried by a Saudi national who was working for or under the control of a Saudi national who was arrested in Lebanon uh, for fighting with Al uh, in the ranks of Al-Qaeda, handed to Saudi Arabia, which released him so he can launch another attack. This is very much the Saudi way of doing things. Uh, uh, they use their prisons and people who they capture to redirect them 
uh, uh, to wage terrorist attacks uh, against uh, their enemies or to uh, fulfill uh, and support their political goals. Now let's change uh, pace for a second. What about Israel? There was a report in the London Times a few years ago that the Saudis had practiced turning off their air defenses in case Israel wanted to fly over and bomb Iran. Is that believable? I, I don't know how authentic this is, but uh, what we know for sure is that Saudi Arabia and Israel have been uh, secret lovers for many years, especially in the past few years. If you, uh, uh, if you note that in, uh, when the GCC leaders came to Washington, we saw how the pro-Israeli media uh, have been really lovey-dovey with the, with, with the summit and even dumping on President Obama for not giving the GCC leaders more than uh, they asked uh, uh, from in terms of uh, stopping negotiating with the Iranians and uh, reaching a, a nuclear deal. The relationship between Saudi Arabia and uh, Israel is, like I said, a secret affair. Uh, uh, th these two countries have not attacked each other uh, uh, in, in militarily, although uh, uh, they are uh, close. There is only seven kilometers that separate Saudi Arabia from Israel, and the Saudis never fought against the Israelis since 1948. And uh, their policies match very well. In, in the region, especially against the Iranians and against uh, uh, popular movements that are establishing or uh, desire to establish uh, democratic or popular governments in, in the region. Uh, it's a good uh, segue uh, to some of the interventions. Now, w we could talk about Bahrain, but I actually have a video of you we're going to show on press from Press TV uh, about that intervention. But let's talk about Yemen. Why did the Saudis attack? Is it at all legal or justified? It's not ju justified uh, uh, whatsoever because there was no uh, Yemeni attack on, uh, uh, on Saudi Arabia. What was happening in Yemen is uh, after the Arab Spring, uh, the Saudis and the Gulf, supported by the United States, wanted to steal the revolution of the Yemeni people and uh, gave Ali Abdullah Saleh, the dictator who was in power since 1978, uh, uh, immunity and uh, installed his uh, crony and uh, vice president, uh, Abdurrahman Mansour Hadi, as president in a sham election. Uh, so when his uh, reign uh, uh, ended last year, there was a lot of uh, and his failure to, uh, to call for elections uh, I think what happened is uh, some people in Yemen decided to, to push him off power, which is uh, the Ansarullah movement. Many people uh, call them Houthis. Uh, with other, uh, not, they are not alone, with other political powers uh, in, 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 in Yemen, causing Yemen to, uh, to go into chaos. Saudi Arabia did not like Yemenis to take their own decision politically to, uh, to go independent, if, if I may say, from the Saudi hegemony over Yemen that lasted since 1978. So the Saudis invaded really to recapture, to, to reoccupy Yemen politically, not necessarily uh, militarily, and to de so it can decide for the Yemenis the type uh, of their government and who can rule them. They have been doing that since 1978, and this is the real reason for the Saudi war and the Yemeni people. And we see there's been a tremendous toll among Yemeni civilians. Yes, absolutely. The, unfortunately, the United States has been involved in this war from the beginning. They knew about it, and uh, they are, uh, uh, the United States uh, 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 Armed Forces is uh, sitting in the command and control in Riyadh, guiding and helping the Saudis uh, wage this war. Uh, we know this from our sources. Uh, and we can confirm it, and I, I, I dare any uh, U.S. reporter ask the Pentagon this question. You note one thing in terms of the Yemen war. It is the worst war, really, uh, in, in, the, in, in recent history in terms of the, the death toll and the destruction. In the, uh, and, and one most important thing is the lack of international media coverage. Even in Syria, which is, you know, very rough, you, you saw CNN, BBC, and other leading 
international uh, news agencies in Yemen, where is no, there is no threat to these people. They, none of these people, none of these media outlets are uh, in Yemen reporting on this uh, illegal war, which was waged uh, with the support of the international community, uh, uh, based on what? Restoring, that was the the, uh, the excuse, restoring the government of Abdul Rabbu Mansur Hadi, a government that its term has ended in February 2014. So really, this is an example of, of international hypocrisy and disregard to the lives and, and, and welfare of the Yemeni people. Okay, now the last question, but the $64,000 question. What does the regime fear? What might pressure it to change its, its ways? Would it be publicity or trade boycotts or the banning of arms sales? What would really worry the kingdom? The Saudi monarchy is fearful of one thing, uh, of, people, of people's power. The reason that they fought and overthrew uh, the uh, Egyptian uh, government under uh, Mohammed Morsi was that, that they don't want a government based on popular choice. That's why they are invading and attacking Yemen. That's why they invaded Bahrain. That's why they are ruining uh, Iraq with their terrorism. And they did that before. Any government that is based on people's choice, they're against, for sure. And that's why they, uh, they hate uh, most the people who are pushing for an elected parliament, for more freedoms, for democracy, for a liberal uh, political system. Uh, how can we uh, bring an end to that? Is the Saudis spend a lot of money in the United States. They have in, an invisible power in the U.S. and in Europe that, uh, that uh, allows them to portray themselves as moderate, as, as, uh, uh, as a protector of, of that land. Although it's an absolute monarchy with no political participation of the people whatsoever, no freedoms to speak of, yet they are portrayed as, as moderate and reformers. We need to break that chain of media by pushing the media and pushing American uh, 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 politicians and shaming those who take money from the Saudis. Like Take example, the Carter Foundation, the Carter Center and the Clinton Foundations and others who take millions of dollars Millions of dollars of this. Uh, we broke up a little bit there, and you we were just about finished. And you were saying you were naming names of some of the uh, people in the uh, U.S. foundations that were accepting Saudi money. Could you mention that now? Uh, the the Saudis have been able to uh, uh, influence the, the Western countries, their media and their politicians, with by spending millions of dollars. Uh, to change their mind. Take, for example, uh, what many Americans think of the human rights president, uh, Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter has received over $35 million uh, through, to his centers, through Saudi and other Gulf countries' uh, aid uh, or, or, or funding. In terms of the Clinton Foundation, also received tens of millions of dollars. That money... Uh, uh, it, it does not come without requests. You know, there is no free lunch. And they, these people, the, the presidents, the former presidents of the United States, are not alone in receiving funding uh, from the Saudis and other Gulf monarchies. Like I said, and that is intentional because they want the United States protection and they get it by paying off. It's cheaper for them. They can get a $255 billion dollar uh, 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 military protection from the United States every year if they pay $50 million uh, total or maybe less than $100 million to American uh, politicians and uh, policymakers uh, uh, that, that portray them as moderates, as reformers. It is uh, disgusting when you hear an American uh, ambassador uh, calling the people of my country backward and the uh, ruling family is uh, trying to bring them forward to the 21st century. Uh, I don't understand uh, uh, this rationale. A despotic, uh, oppressive, uh, absolute monarchy is progressive, and people who want democracy and participation are seventh century, uh, are stuck in the seventh century. This, uh, th this happened because this ambassador, uh, his stomach is full with Saudi uh, money. 
So to summarize, uh, to, to fight uh, this real backwardness, people power and to expose the people in the U.S. who are getting the money to uh, minimize what the monarchy is. Really. I think we should shame uh, anybody who takes money from the Saudi monarchy or the Gulf monarchy should be tracked, shamed, and basically made to run away from, from the Saudi uh, monarchy. A lot of pressure could be brought to these people if we ask them again and again and again and again, and if we raise hell about this. And I think one of the most important policy uh, that we can change is to stop the United States protection of the Gulf monarchies uh, uh, paying uh, from uh, on, on, the, on the dime of the American uh, people. And the American people need schools and bridges that $250 billion a year could go to America instead of going to uh, regressive uh, uh, absolute monarchies that that uh, that hate Christians and Jews, that oppress women and oppress their own people and, and won't allow their people to even to, to tweet freely. Well, thank you for all this, and hopefully in a few minutes we'll connect up with you by Skype for questions and answers. Thank you very much.